I'm Ashley. Welcome to my channel. This is my first video. Um, so I'm a little bit nervous doing this. I just want it to go okay, but um, let's just get into it. Let's all get through this together, okay? Um, today I'm going to talk about how anger can lead to depression. And um, a lot of people call this like anger getting turned in on itself or something getting turned inward. Um, so I'm gonna explain a little bit more about that, how that happens. And hopefully you can see like, it's really what I mean is it's unexpressed anger. It's not that anger itself leads to depression, it's unexpressed anger is what gets turned in and becomes something toxic for you internally. First, let's talk about depression and just a little overview of depression. I'm sure most of you know what depression is or you felt it or heard people talk about it. Let's just do a little bit of overview because it'll help um, illuminate the other end of anger. Okay, so depression, you know, when you're feeling, it's like you're feeling sad, but it's more than that. It's, it's not just sadness, it's you're feeling it's just so low unmotivated, you can hardly move sometimes. I mean, this looks different for everybody, but maybe you can hardly do anything. You're not interested in the things you used to be interested in. You don't wanna do the workout that you normally love doing every day. You don't have the energy for it. <clears throat> you don't wanna eat, or maybe you eat a lot, or just more than usual. Um, or maybe you're sleeping all the time and all you wanna do is sleep. And kind of like you want to go unconscious like there's nothing to wake up for there's nothing good um, there are variations on that for everybody but you get it the idea that it's some combination of those things and they're it's almost always accompanied by a sense of worthlessness or hopelessness and then on top of that people tend to feel guilt because they're not doing all the things they should be doing or wish they were doing or what people expect them to do and then i think that you know, turns in on itself and, you know, just feeds the cycle. The life force and creative energy within you just slowly drains out. And like I said, I want to talk about how anger an unexpressed anger leads to depression, this state of worthlessness and hopelessness. So say someone <clears throat> disappoints you or hurts you and you don't know what to do with those feelings and you don't know that you can talk to them about it or in fact you know you can't because you're afraid of their reaction or they have reacted poorly in the past and they really really mean something to you or it's a system and you don't feel like you can make any dent in the system your, all your anger is going to do nothing so what can happen sometimes is that that anger that like, you're so bad, look at what you did to me, gets turned in on yourself and you become the bad one and you become the target. It's like a total misdirection of the feeling. And I know you're probably thinking like, but why would we want to do that? Why would anybody want to do that? Well, kind of like you're forced to. I mean, when you don't have any option, it's like you're left to just like turn it inward and say like, well, if I can't control it out there, I'll control it in here. <clears throat> and I'll do that by naming myself as the bad guy. And I guess if I fix myself, then maybe I can fix the situation. So this habit may have started in childhood. You know, a lot of times if this is your pattern with anger, um, you may have had parents where they made you feel a lot, they disappointed you, they hurt you, they made you angry and you couldn't express it to them, like for whatever reason. Like I said, like maybe they couldn't tolerate it. Maybe they would get mad at you back. Maybe they would hurt you if you, if you got angry. Um, and it was just best to not do that and to learn how to just control yourself and criticize yourself instead. So you may have gotten into this habit very early and it may lead to a chronically depressed state because you do that enough and you talk to yourself and you make yourself the problem enough and you turn that anger inward enough and where else do you end up but feeling worthless and hopeless? So I do this 
all the time still. I struggle with this. Um, I really try to be as honest as I can about what I'm feeling with people, but anger is still really hard for me. I am afraid it will destroy the connection or destroy the relationship in some way if I'm not really careful with it. Um, and so rather than destroy it, I would turn it in on myself. So this can come up most clearly with my analyst. So I'm in psychoanalysis. I go four times a week, you know, lay down on the couch kind of work. And my analyst, if she makes me angry still, and I've been working for her for years, working with her for years, if she makes me angry or does something upsetting, it's so hard for me. Like I want to protect her, but really I'm protecting myself. But what ends up happening is I don't, I can't say exactly what's going on for me. I don't want to destroy her or the relationship. And so I end up kind of saying nothing and I, or, and I don't think what I'm angry about has value. Like I dismiss it and I think it's not worthy of being talked about. I must have the wrong idea. And what can happen is I become very quiet and um, like I, and it's like, I can't think anymore. And I just go into a really dark place with myself. Like, it's like I'm dissociated and collapsed instead of just being angry and engaging with her, you know, which wouldn't you prefer it if someone with you was just angry, at least engaging with you than dissociated and like collapsed and, you know, somewhere else. Um, so in my family, I learned that nothing I could say or do was going to make a difference. So I learned to keep it all to myself, including my anger. I learned it wasn't going to do anything to express it. So why express it? You can see how ideas of hopelessness and worthlessness come in. And as a child, I would have thought that's just me. That's on me. I still thought mom and dad are good people and um, they want to take care of me. It must be me that's the problem. I got to fix this within me. So I end up treating myself as I was treated. So I end up treating myself as though nothing I have to say is valuable. My anger isn't valuable because that's how I was treated. I stay trapped in a prison of my own making. And the prison was put upon me as a child, but I keep it going, you know, because when I'm in that state with my analyst, like that feels horrible. And she's working to try and help me out of it, but it's hard and it's hard to trust her that she really wants to hear what I have to say and that she can handle it and tolerate it. It's just so much easier to turn it in on myself, but I really don't want to do that because it feels like shit. So the next time you find yourself depressed, check in and actually trace it back and see like, when did this start? Was there any disappointment or something that wasn't discussed or any feeling in yourself that you dismissed that then got buried under this pile of like, I'm the problem, I'm worthless, I'm nothing. See if there's a way to talk, put some words on the anger and get it out of you. Cause it, for me at least, it's like, if it's trapped there inside of you, it's only becoming more toxic. Get it out of you. Um, and I'm not saying go be physically, <laughs> get it physically out of you on someone, but use words and try to get it out of you and see what people do with it. See if people can handle it. See if people can tolerate you, you know, just see and see if you can tolerate it. I bet you can tolerate more than you think you can. Um, and you'll find value in, in having had this reaction in yourself, like learn to value that you probably got anger for, angry for a good reason. So respect it and honor it, pay attention to it. Just let yourself have it and move on, you know? Okay, let me know your thoughts, feelings, questions. If you'd like a more expanded, discussion of this, let me know. If you would like me to talk about whatever else you would like me to talk about, let me know. Um, my contact info is in the description box. 
and I hope to see you around here again. Thanks for watching.